Welcome, friends, to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, and we welcome you to this time where we can join together to grow closer in love of God and neighbor. Take a deep breath, breathing in God's presence, breathing out the concerns of the day, that we may know God is with us, that we may come to the cross, lay our burdens down, and be raised up to new and eternal life, now and always. Friends, hear the affirmation and the petition. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Isaiah 58, 10 and 11. He said to them, when you pray, say this, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Each day give us our daily bread and forgive our sins as we forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us into the time of trial. Luke eleven two 2 through 4. Friends, our theme this week is making room for God. I hope you had some time to reflect on it yesterday or if you're joining us just today. How can we reflect on our own life? How can we make room for what we truly believe is most important? The things that lead to life. Our reading today comes from St. Augustine from his work, The Confessions. The house of my soul is too small for you to enter. Make it more spacious by your coming. It lies in ruins. Rebuild it. Some things are to be found there which will offend your gaze. I confess this to be so and know it well. But who will clean my house? To whom But yourself can I cry, cleanse me of my hidden sins, O Lord, and for those incurred through the others, pardon your servant. I believe, and so I will speak. You know everything, Lord. Have I not laid my own transgressions bare before you, to my own condemnation? My God, and I have not forgotten the wicked, have, and have you not forgiven the wickedness of my heart? I do not argue my case against you, for you are truth itself, nor do I wish to deceive myself, lest my iniquity be caught in its own lies. No, I do not argue the case with you, because if you, Lord, keep the score of our iniquities, then who, Lord, can bear it? God bless the reading from St. Augustine today. This wonderful confession, this wonderful act that St. Augustine is partaking in to say, Lord, you know, examine me. And we see this. He quotes scripture several times throughout this. But examine me and, and help me understand where I need help. If my house is in shambles, help me rebuild it. If it's filthy, help me clean it. If it's not big enough, help me expand it. I love that metaphor, that language, because we believe we are temples, residing places of God, residences where God can take hold and place, inhabit our very selves. And that brings us these good things. It brings us very saving work, reconciling work, resurrection work. 
And so again, can you sit today and examine yourself? What needs to be removed? What needs to be removed? What do we become obsessed about or focused on? How do we waste our time and our talents and our treasures? We all do it. We can all be better. That doesn't mean God hates us or God is leaving us. God offers grace and forgiveness. Like any good parent, like any good friend, like any good lover, God wants the best for us. And if we are not living to our best, God still hopes that we can. Our scripture reading today comes from Ezra. It's one we don't often read in our daily devotions. Ezra chapter 8. Ezra and Nehemiah, they're coming back from the exile, rebuilding the city of Jerusalem. Good story. Then I called for a fast there at the Ahava River so that we might submit before our God and ask of him a safe journey for ourselves, our children, and all our possessions. I had been ashamed to ask the king for a group of soldiers and cavalry to help us in facing the enemies on the way. Because we had told the king, the power of God favors all who seek him, but his fierce wrath is against all those who abandon him. So he fasted and prayed to our God for this. And then he responded to us. Wow, what a great affirmation from Ezra. So there, if you don't know the story, they're returning from exile in Babylon. The Babylonians had come in and destroyed the entire city of Jerusalem, uh, taken the leaders of that land to uh, Babylon for exile to live in. That was just their practice. Lived there for 50 years or so. That was the length of the exile. And now they were offered by the new king a uh, time to come home. And they said, well, God will be with us, but if we're not in sync, then God won't be with us. And again, I I don't look at that as retribution. I look at that of just like the human experience, right? Like if we're on the path set before us by God, yes, there are hardships and there are enemies and there are things we will face, but God is with us. If we choose our own path, We're on our own. It's no different than in any of our relationships. If my children live by the expectations that we have, they will be loved and encouraged, but they always do that, but they'll be safe. (laughs) If they follow the rules in a sense, I use the word expectations, if they invest in the family and live as part of the family, then they will have food and clothing and shelter and we will support them in whatever they do. But at some point they can leave and go about their way and it's not a matter of me not loving them or encouraging them, but if they say, hey, I'm on my own, then you're on your own. And our hope is they will be on their own in a good way and we'll continue to support them and encourage them. But you don't understand if they go in a way that is destructive, then they're on their own. And if they reach out for help, we can help them. And that's what God does. I mean, that's the good news. No matter what happens, no matter how far we go, no matter no, no matter how much we mess up, we can turn around. We can come home. We can say, Lord, save me. And as soon as we do, I believe God is there to reach out and save us. Friends, as we come to the second day of the week, we take time for confession. Confession is our way to bring to God whatever's on our hearts, whatever's holding us back, whatever keeps us from loving God and loving neighbor. Sit a minute. And bring to God all the things on your heart that may prevent you from truly knowing God's love.
Friends, hear the good news. God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone. So my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.